Good morning to all. I am Sumitra, working as an associate professor in RMD Engineering College. Now in this video, I am going to explain about the business environment in principles of management and what is the role of environment or in what way the environment is going to affect the business or an organization in detail. So now a business environment means the forces and the institution that are lying outside the firm and in which the uh, organization and its member must, uh, they are dealing together to achieve the organizational purpose. So it is the environment which consists of the forces and the institution lying outside the organization in which the members are dealing towards to achieve a uh, organizational purpose. So in general, the business environment is a, uh, considering from two perspectives like internal environment and external environment uh, whereas the internal environment in the f is, or those factors uh, that are lying within the organization that which affects the uh, business organization and also it can be easily controllable for example uh, the frame of policies rules and um, methodologies that are constructed by the which have been developed by the organization or have to be considered as the internal factors. Since they are framed only by the members of the organization, if it is required in case of um, urgency or in case of necessity, we can be able to alter those factors. So that's why it is known as these factors are under controllable phenomenon. Right. Uh, so now um, next uh, category is nothing but the external environment. This Whereas this external environment itself is getting divided into two more classes like uh, micro environment and macro environment. First, let me explain about the internal environment and what are the factors are getting uh, related with the internal environment. So this is the picture which explains uh, the factors which are affecting the organization internally. That is, uh, it may be a value system or the vision, mission and objectives, management structure and internal power relationship or a human resource or otherwise it may be even a tangible and intangible asserts. So coming to the value system. So these are all nothing but the principles or either the policies which are followed by the owners. And it should be framed in such a way that it should uh, develop the organization, but not necessary. It will be always remain static. So when the technology technology is getting updated, we need to adapt. The organization has to adapt. Adaption in the sense it has to frame the values, policies, and all, right? So this, in this way, the value system is having an impact over the uh, running of an organization. So, for example, um, regarding uh, values, uh, globally, Infosys company and Wipro company will be rated at the top level. And next comes your vision, mission, and objectives. So vision, mission, and objectives are nothing but the future, uh, futuristic point of future vision or the objectives which will guide its operation and the strategic de decisions. For example, Amul, the taste of India. So it is having a mission that is, it is proposed by the uh, company called Gujarat Cooperation Milk Marketing Federation, which is having a vision that liberate our farmers from the obsession and leading them to prosperity. This is the vision and mission of that uh, Amul, the taste of India company from by Gujarat Cooperation. Uh, milk Manufacturing uh, Marketing Federation. And next comes the management structure and internal power relationship. Management structure means already we all know that there exist different levels of management like top level, middle level and bottom level. If there exists a proper structure or if there exists a scalar chain, uh, whether the authority has to be uh, uh, given from the top level to the bottom level or even if the bottom level is having an issue they should be following the scalar chain only so if there exists a proper management structure or proper structure for the management and also if there exists a proper relationship between the members of the management then uh, these factors is also going to affect the organization functioning and next factor is nothing but human resource we all know that uh, uh, 75 percentage of an organization uh, is consisting of the human resource Right. So if there exists a um, human resource in an effective manner, suppose if the human resources are well utilized, which means that the employees or even the managerial persons are well equipped in their technical skills. And if they are in a proper authority and they are, if they have a proper attitude and dedication, motivation, if all these things will decide the values of the human resources that existing in an organization, then coming to the 
tangible and intangible assets so tangible means uh, the physical properties of the organization like uh, building vehicles everything so these are also going to affect to some extent the running of an organization intangible assets means the again the shares uh, the policies and these are all going to be uh, considered as the intangible assets which will have a certain extent over the functioning of an organization next comes the external uh, these are the value system whatever i told you this is given over here it can be defined as the set of values uh, which are logical and consistent which are have been adapted by the firm as a standard guide next comes the vision mission and objectives and for reason for the existence of the organization these must be reframed accordingly and if this is kept refined then it is tough for the organization to uh, meet the competitors right so next one is management structure it implies the hierarchy in which the management level is existing over there and the degree of the support and the contribution received from the employees is also following the same scalar chain next one human resource and this is the most important as an or otherwise we can say uh, the power of the human resource is able to make or break an organization so in means of by means of competencies attitude dedication moral etc it speaks a lot to the company strength and weakness so tangible and intangible assets means i already explained you uh, physical assets like land building machinery stock etc will be considered as tangible and whereas the intangible assets research um, owns towards the development and technological capabilities and next comes your external business environment so the external business environment or the factors which are lying outside the organization but to a certain extent it is going to affect the uh, running of an organization and uh, here we have two classification like uh, micro and uh, macro so the factors which are considering under the micro environment or uh, uh, under controlled they can be controlled to a small extent uh, uh, by the members of the organization itself so the factors which are considered coming under the micro environment or the suppliers marketing uh, persons public and then the mediators so and so like that so let me explain about each and everything in detail now so first uh, these are the factors which are uh, coming under the external environment whereas this is the micro environment factors which is lying next to the that is immediate to the firm or the organization and the outermost circle represents the factors coming under the macro environment so uh, first of all coming to the micro environment factors they are the competitors suppliers customers intermediaries shareholders employees and the media so let me ex explain about each and everything in detail competitors so uh, if the competitor's strength and weakness and the technology what they are adapting for producing the product is not known for the organization working people then definitely it is not possible for an organization to survive in that um, industry because if the co if the competitor is producing the same product whatever product that organization is producing there exists a competitor of same product then they need to compare in what way uh, the technology can be modified or at what price we can offer them to drag the customers like that so we should have a thorough knowledge of what the competitor's competitor strength and weakness right so suppliers uh, suppliers plays a vital role even if there exists some um, uh, suppliers of a different qualities we need to select a proper supplier right so to carry out the production process definitely we are in need of suppliers uh, suppliers may be uh, either a financier who provides the money or an college who provides the sources as a human resource like that right so depending upon the quality of the suppliers the organization effectiveness can be affected to a uh, to some extent so next one is the customers so uh, whatever may be the business people or the organization produce finally it has to reach the customers they are the end products right so uh, in order to sell our product in the market first of all we need to know what is the actual demand of the customer what is the capability of the customer to buy the product so uh, before going for uh, purchasing a product or coming out with a product we need to need, uh, we need to know all the details from the customer point of view so this is an important aspect okay then comes uh, intermediaries intermediaries are those persons who are serving as a link between the buyer and the purchaser so um, between the buyer and the purchaser we should definitely require a person who will uh, take over our product to that side it may be either through a media or by means of some retail holders and then um, wholesalers retail shops distributors dealers 
etc so or even delivery boys so these are the persons who are coming under the intermediaries then shareholders so if a organization is looking for a shareholder means uh, uh, whose aim is to improve the investment or the capital cost they are the actual owners of the company right so even if those if the attitude of the shareholder is getting changed then it is going to affect the company's uh, that is organization functioning it to a certain extent and next comes your employees so employees means they are the staffs who are uh, getting hired by the person in an organization and they are working towards the achievement of the organizational goal so even they are getting salary and at the same time they need to uh, be getting motivated and also uh, they must be given certain respect and all right so if the employees are working in a satisfied uh, environment in all aspects then uh, the organization will run in an effective manner right so in this way the employees is also considered as one of the factors which is coming under micro environment then media as i told you media is playing a vital role in uh, taking our product which is purchased which is produced by the organization to the customer for example we all know that sterilite uh, problem right so in that uh, loca local area uh, the thing is getting a serious worsen because of the media people only right through the media only it is getting propagated and finally the company is getting closed and all due to the pollution created even though the public is the reason for coming out with the uh, issue through the media only it reached a lot of people so media has a uh, effective role in uh, life of each and every company it will be doing right things or at the same time it will be giving some fake news on the so whatever may be the things it's propagating towards the media it is definitely going to affect the organization in a manner okay next comes your macro environment macro environment means it involves the factors which are and not under the control of the members of the organization like uh, economical environment economic environment of the country political and legal issues of the country demographical and socio culture all these things are coming under the macro environment so coming under uh, coming to an economic environment economic environment means the economic condition of a country is going to decide the organization function for example the per capita uh, consumption and the credit facilities and the saving habits of each and every individual is going to get decided only because of the economic con economic condition of the country so there exist different types of country like developing country underdeveloped and uh, developed countries so based on each and every category of the country the economic condition is getting varied based on that only the organization effectiveness is also getting varied next comes here political and legal environment if the political and legal environment or uh, uh, getting changed drastically uh, for example if they are announcing if they are changing the rate of interest uh, provided by the banks uh, these to some extent the laws and the rules and the regulation the policies which the company needs to adhere right so if the companies is not in an adaptable manner definitely its function is going to get affected then technological environment and we all know that technology is ever changing it is uh, changing day by day it is growing day by day so it will be a plus point for the company if it is in the first mover in the case otherwise it will be getting in a worse way it will be subjected to success of the product if the if it if the company or the organization is technologically updated so next next thing is socio cultural so since in an organization um, it 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 consists of a group of people uh, coming from different culture coming from different places of country so there exists a matters of hiring the employees and advertising the products and the service and decision making through a proper means right it consists of a uh, human relationship so that's why socio cultural environment also is coming under the macro environment demographic environment so it means the size and the type education level and the distribution of the population in that geographical area so the knowledge of this environment is also required in order to take an optimal decision or optimal marketing for the target population and then global environment so due to the liberalization of domestic companies uh, they can offer the products and services for the sale to other that is import and export and also while doing this uh, the management should have the management in the sense organization in, as a total should have a knowledge regarding the global requirements for the product uh, in the universe right uh, with this i'll be ending of the session in the next video i'll be explaining about the marketing technology in detail thank you all